Seriously, don't have the baby of a guy you've broken up with. Oh, could it be that you couldn't forget about me? Did you think that if you had a child, I'd never be able to cut ties with you? How naive is that? Hey, hey, what do you say? It's just ridiculous. Looking back, breaking up was absolutely the right decision. If I had stayed with such a delusional man, I would never have achieved the happiness I have now. Today I want to talk about my unforgettable dark history and the revolt against it. My name is Jessica. I'm a 53-year-old housewife who enjoys doing household chores while watching the morning news. I was 38 at the time. I was living peacefully with my husband, Mike. But around that time, a bit of unrest started to creep into our home. Mike would respond to what I said with a so what or, and in a way that was oddly intimidating or indifferent. So, you see, I would try to continue the conversation, but then he would cut me off with I'm busy right now. I felt dismissed, treated with disdain. It wasn't that he was always like this. If anything, he was someone who loved to chat and would crack jokes to make me laugh whenever he had the chance. But then this transformation happened. It was such a sudden change that I wondered if I had done something wrong, but I couldn't think of anything specific. One day, I noticed a faint lipstick mark on the back of a shirt Mike had brought to the laundry. He had come home late from work that day, claiming he had to work overtime. It was hard to imagine that someone at Mike's male-dominated office had leaned against his back with lipstick on. If that were the case, it was too scary to even think about. Could it be a woman, I wondered. Although I naturally came to that conclusion, a lipstick stain alone was hardly conclusive evidence. There could be countless excuses, like accidentally bumping into someone. I decided to wait a bit longer to gather more evidence, carefully checking for any unusual behavior from Mike. Ironically, just paying a little more attention revealed a slew of evidence of infidelity. For instance, Mike would always get up to use the bathroom around 2 a.m. when he was sleeping at night. I had never doubted him before, but it turned out he was using that time to talk to a woman on the phone in the bathroom. There were also instances when I found long strands of hair inside his suit jacket, and sometimes, upon closer inspection, his handkerchief seemed to have traces of what appeared to be lipstick. The most damning piece of evidence was a tinted lip balm I found when I borrowed Mike's car for the first time. After a while, it would be another story if Mike was known to use colored lip balm, but this seemed like the most indisputable evidence I had found. After ten years of marriage, the frustration of having Mike taken by someone new, along with the loneliness of not wanting to be alone, and the resurgence of my affection for Mike were overwhelming. Is there really no chance of starting over? Isn't there something I can do to make him look my way again? Isn't there a way to rekindle what has cooled off? Just as I was pondering these thoughts, the reality of my pregnancy became clear. It's needless to say that I thought pregnancy at this timing was a gift from God. We don't have children. The monotony in our relationship might have been the cause of Mike's affair. Maybe this pregnancy could be the chance for him to change. Holding on to that hope, I brought up the pregnancy to Mike. But then, what the heck? Give me a break. This is such a hassle. Let's just break up. I couldn't believe my ears. Well, looking back, I think my judgment and expectations were too naive. The likelihood of a man who's cheating coming back is extremely rare. Life isn't like a TV drama where things just work out smoothly. But back then, I truly believed that since we married out of love, we can surely find our way back to each other. Is that really how you're going to say it? It's your child, too. Even for the child, it would be better off for a dad like me not to be around. You've realized it too, right? Seeing Mike's smirking face made my heart skip a beat. That I'm having an affair, pretending not to know about Mike's affair, and hoping the pregnancy would magically fix everything, it felt like I was being pushed off a cliff. 
At that time, I thought if the affair is brought to light, things will get tense, and Mike will never come back. But that was a misjudgment, too. I wanted you to find out and did so much to let you, but you never said a word. I was at my wit's end. What I was waiting for you to say, this is unthinkable. Let's get a divorce. You really made me go through a lot of trouble. You're kidding, right? I wouldn't bother with such a hassle if it were a lie. I have a cute 24-year-old girlfriend now, a 38-year-old about to get fat from pregnancy. I have no use for you anymore. Here, take this as alimony or whatever. Just agree on divorce, he said. After that, I cried for three days and nights, and eventually, when Mike stopped coming home, I found a resolve to divorce. Five years have passed since then. I was afraid of growing old and being single, but fortunately, I remarried my childhood friend, Steve, also a divorcee, and we live modestly with our child, Chloe. Steve had been cheated on by his wife, too, a fellow survivor of a messy divorce. Being comrades who share the same pain made life with him very comfortable. On our anniversary, he would book a fancy restaurant every year, and for my birthday, he would get me something slightly expensive. I felt cherished. I hope these days will continue forever. As we celebrated another anniversary this year, it was supposed to be a delightful dinner at our usual upscale restaurant. Wow, Jessica, is that you? The person who gasped upon seeing my face was Mike. What? Why are you here? I couldn't hide my disgust. What a tragedy. I had accidentally run into Mike coming out of the restroom. What? I'm here for a business dinner. Unlike you, I'm busy, huh? Mike glanced over my shoulder and approached briskly. Wow, so you had the child, huh? The one you were pregnant with when we split? That's gross. Saying that Mike grabbed the child's hand, looked closely, and began to say outrageous things. Seriously, don't have the child of a guy you've broken up with. Oh, could it be that you couldn't forget about me? Thinking that if you had a child, I'd never be able to cut ties with you. How naive is that? Hey, hey, what do you say? Mike, grinning, seemed to be having a great time, spinning the child around by the hand. The child's face twisted in distress, and he started crying out loud. Daddy. Mummy. Help. Some stranger is taking me. There, there, I'm your daddy, and your mommy's right over there. You're just like her. A stupid child. Just when Mike blurted out those words, suddenly, a man towering over, taller than six feet, appeared from behind and forcefully grabbed Mike's arm. Excuse me, but that boy is mine. You know what? Mike's bewildered expression almost made me burst out laughing. Ha, huh, is this guy your new husband, Jessica? I didn't answer Mike's question. I'm not sure what you've been saying, but surely you don't think you can make someone's child cry and get away with it, do you? The tall man said this as he glared at Mike. A glimpse of a tattoo peeked out from his arm, and noticing it, Mike instantly turned pale. Wait. I, hey, Jessica, tell your husband to stop. Excuse me, that woman is not my wife. What? Confused again, Mike glanced back and forth between me, the man, and the screaming child. What? Then who is this child? Before he knew it, Mike's arms were bound by the man. This man is a lunatic, repeating nonsense. Someone, call the staff. There's a man here harming a child. The man's outcry stirred the restaurant. What a day this turned out to be on such an important anniversary, I thought to myself with a smirk. It turned out to be quite a memorable day, although unexpectedly. Waiter, over here. I saw this man forcibly grabbing a child's arm. My words left Mike gaping in shock. Wait, Jessica, what? What's going on? Seriously, I don't understand what's happening. 
as Mike frantically protested. I said I am not that man's wife, and that child is neither mine nor yours. But he was right behind you. You were blocking the narrow passage to the restroom entrance, standing there like a post, preventing the boy from entering. He was simply following his father to the restroom, and you obstructed him. What? Really? You might want to make people the butt of your jokes, but you should be careful of jumping to conclusions. Why don't you look around a bit more? Shut up. I don't need to be lectured by you. Indeed, my valuable words probably wouldn't reach a suspicious person like you. I'm not a suspicious person. Well, any man who approaches an unknown child, grabs their arm, and then uses baby talk like, I'm your daddy, is undoubtedly suspicious, no matter how you look at it. But that was. And then you tell the woman in front of you, a mommy is right there, isn't she? Are you still under the impression that we're married? As I said this with a smirk, Mike turned red with anger and shouted, Don't mess with me. But the louder Mike's voice, the tighter the grip of the man holding him. Ow, ow. Hey, man, back off. I'm innocent. Innocent. It's undeniable that you made my dear son cry, isn't it? But that was a misunderstanding. I quickly interjected. It's a fact that you misunderstood and assaulted someone else's son on your own accord. Then Mike glared at me and said, You jerk. Lakes, getting glared at by a suspicious person. How scary. I responded sarcastically with a hint of mock fear in my voice. This seemed to irritate Mike even more, and he began to struggle wildly against the man restraining him. Thinking you and I are still a couple, huh? Or could it be that you haven't forgotten about me? I taunted him with the same accusation he had thrown at me earlier. Predictably, Mike got angry, and sensing the danger, the tall man quickly pinned him to the floor. If you thought you could escape from me, you're sorely mistaken. While the man might have meant it lightly, the tattoo visible on his arm made the threat seem all too real. Mike must have thought this might be the end for me today. I thought to myself. Come on, Jessica, tell them it's a misunderstanding, Mike pleaded. But dragging someone else's child by the hand isn't just a misunderstanding. I retorted, I thought he was my child. Mike said, his voice breaking like a child's, which made me burst out laughing. You claim he's my child without even acknowledging or paying child support. What did we ever discuss about acknowledgement or child support after our divorce? Well, no, but you knew I had no intention of acknowledging, which is why you never contacted me, right? Idiot. I wouldn't just let it go. If I had a child, I'd make sure you acknowledged and paid up one way or another. Then why was the pregnancy test wrong? I went to the gynecologist, and it turned out I wasn't pregnant, which solidified my decision to divorce. Yes, during those three days when the topic of divorce came up and Mike stopped coming home, it's true that I spent that time crying. But considering I might have had a child, I couldn't just divorce without clarification. So I first went to the gynecologist. I wanted to sort out alimony, child support, and future living expenses. In my head, even if we were going to divorce, if avoiding the divorce would benefit the child, I was prepared to endure. However, at the gynecologist, there were no signs of pregnancy, but they did find a tumor on my ovary. During the surgery for that, I happened to share a room with Steve's mother. Steve and I were childhood friends, so I knew his parents well. Reuniting with Steve during his visits, we became close again. At one point, I thought of the pregnancy as a blessing from God to make things work with Mike. But in reality, it brought me to someone who made me realize that parting ways with Mike was the right decision. And it also led to the early detection of my illness. And despite having one ovary removed last year, I gave birth to Chloe, my child with Steve. It may seem like I've been through a lot, but in truth, it's all been for the best. 
Upon learning everything, Mike turned pale and muttered, No way. I got dumped by that woman. Needless to say, I couldn't help but laugh. Well, it's no surprise a young woman wouldn't want to be with an aging man like him. At that moment, a police officer appeared. It seemed someone from the restaurant had called them. Mike received a stern warning from the police. It seems the misunderstanding was cleared up, and he apologized profusely to the child's family, which prevented the situation from escalating. The scolding from the police seemed to have hit him hard. He even came to apologize to me. Since Mike doesn't know where I live now, he actually went to my parents' house to express his apologies to my mother. He admitted that the way we parted was the worst and that he was wrong. Aging, having been abandoned by his affair partner, and finding himself increasingly isolated, the recent incident seemed to have broken him, leaving him to feel the loneliness of having no one to comfort him. Well, it's too late for apologies now, as far as I'm concerned. I continue to ignore Mike. Honestly, if we hadn't met there, I probably would have gradually forgotten about him altogether. By the way, Steve noticed I hadn't returned to our table for a while and came to the restroom to check on me. However, he decided to watch from his shadows, thinking this might be Jessica's first and last chance to get back at Mike. Of course, I was ready to jump in if anything happened, but that guy restraining Mike was just too strong. Ah, uh, that guy apparently used to live in Mexico and was the captain of a football team there. I mentioned, no wonder he's strong. Guess I had no role to play there. I was seriously scared, thought he was from some dangerous profession or something, he said with a laugh, and I couldn't help but laugh along with him. Normally, one might say something like, not very manly of you, but Steve doesn't have to deal with Mike, and I believe it was a problem I needed to resolve myself. I acknowledged that I lacked strength during the divorce. In the end, I simply went along with the divorce as Mike wished and received a standard amount of alimony from Mike and his affair partner. Reality doesn't always progress like a fairy tale, so getting an exorbitant alimony was out of the question, and I had lost the strength to fight back. But I believe I finally became truly strong by standing up to him with unwavering resolve. In the end, now I can proudly face Steve and Chloe. Coincidentally, this year's anniversary became a new beginning for me. And now, with Steve becoming a freelance architect and his income doubling, I quit my part-time job and am enjoying life as a relaxed housewife. When I ask Chloe, who's somewhat in a rebellious phase, to do something, she complains. But when I stay silent, she quietly helps out. This trait of hers is something that only Steve and I see secretly find irresistible. Though Chloe is our only child due to a late pregnancy, our family of three and our two dogs live a life that's lively, perhaps too much so. Despite never having children with Mike, I was able to conceive and give birth at an older age with Steve. Even with just one ovary remaining, in a way, I consider this to be fate. As a child, I secretly dreamed of marrying that special someone destined just for me. And who would have thought that dream would come true the second marriage? Sometimes, I allow myself to indulge in such dreamy thoughts. With these reflections, I cherish the ordinary days that come my way, days that are anything but ordinary, filled with love and gratitude.